talking about best, the current system people use, you know, I was, I was in the van coming here and I had to go make a purchase. I had to call the bank and ask them for permission to use my own money. Yeah. I had to call because I knew that that purchase amount wouldn't go through. That's insane to think about, but that's what's been normalized, right? So people think that that's all that there is. Now, back in 2017, 2016, when we were kind of just getting started and things were just kind of taking off, it felt like traditional finance was way ahead. But you look at DeFi right now, you look at the speed of remittance, you look at the speed of transactions, like you were talking about educating people. It's just showing them that there's a better product and a better, like once you're on chain and you get comfortable with like not being in the system, you begin to realize that there's an alternative system that's a lot better that's being built. What are your thoughts on the alternative well, no, I, system? I worked in, I've worked in banking for close to 20 years and uh, I reckon some of the software still in that banking is probably it's older insane. than your parents. Honestly, it's like putting some real legacy 70s, 80s software that's still doing like dealing with the, um, the back office transactions. I, it's until you start working in a bank, you don't realize like- How insane how, is this? It, how insane is how many processes that you need to do the back office, the settlement, it goes through so many downstream systems. It's crazy. It's so inefficient. So much staff that's there. This is where there's huge costs. Uh, again, I think if you don't know this stuff, you just you think, oh yeah, it's just. But we're starting to see neo banks that have come through, and you know, like there's been some that have been very successful. Uh, you know, this is where I think we've started to see the bridge from like Web two to Web three of sending money instantly, <laughs> FX free as well for some of these. These are these are building because they're not built on legacy systems, and I think crypto can really sort of then do that next step of making making it frictionless. Okay, mm -hmm. and I think this is what um, is really gonna bring in these users when they realize, oh look, I can just send you that just like that on the app and then I can go out and use it. Because you probably could see then people, payments um, shops will start integrating Telegram. Imagine that, and then you just go up there, oh, this is the username at, um, I don't know, at 7-Eleven. You can just sort of just pay them that and it just goes straight through, you know, like this, this, you know, you can easily see as part of the future there. Hmm. Yeah. Two words, tech debt. Yeah. Um, you know, I think there's 30, 40 plus years of tech debt that some of these financial <laughs> institutions are, are trying to, uh, trying to work through right now. Um, one of the main value propositions or, or why I think blockchains are so valuable, um, is that they do get people aligned around a certain standard. Mm. Um, and they bring an open source community to service that standard, essentially. One of the problems that you know, banks and financial institutions have is at least a lot of their internal systems are fragmented. Maybe something's in C++, something's in OCaml, <laughs> something's you know, in all these different languages. There's no consensus yeah. um, around the tech stack that you're using. Um, so it's maybe an esoteric reasons why I think blockchains are important in that they align an open source community around a standard of value transfer. Hmm. That's very interesting. What do you think is the value proposition that Ton has that none of the other blockchains have? Uh, social graph. I, 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 there's actually a couple. Everyone says like the social graph um, and, and trust, right? Maybe the most underlooked one is the talent pool that it appeals to. Mm. So what I mean by that is you have like all these like WeChat mini app developers, right? And they're looking for alternatives to you know, launching their projects on, on WeChat. Maybe they launch, want to launch it somewhere else, other monetization options. And they are a natural fit to come to Telegram and Ton. Mm -hmm. That value prop does not exist for other chains, yeah. right? So, and, and even like the go to market, okay, buy Telegram advertisements, list on an app store, use referral links. These are things that, you know, successful web to FinTech and, and game users and uh, things like that. These folks know how to use these tools. Yeah. So it's a very natural fit for them to come in. They don't have to go learn software. something new. Yeah. They don't see a new, a new opportunity and then have to build a new a new set of skills. They can take the set of skills and capitalize on the new opportunity. Exactly. And I think the benefit benefit Great. of Ton is, and I'm seeing other blockchains now looking at Telegram, realizing it. It's extra convoluted to use these blockchains. So then it's like instead of doing it in one step, you have to do like an extra four or five steps. But then you're on that blockchain within Telegram, and it just it, again, you're losing that like, ease of flow coming in. It's like, oh, why do I have to then go into a channel and then create a wallet and then do this and do that where it's like one click? And I think I speak to so many blockchains and they go, we've got like amazing tech, but we just don't have people 
that distribution, that ease, that quick push. This is what we're seeing. You know, like this is probably what's going to start Ton, and then the tech behind Ton is going to then be that next wave to bring in all, all, all of these people and then sort of get those apps, get the remittances, so simple. So yeah, it's the, brilliant. The, there's a concept called a, a golden moment, right? And that could be when Mart and I are chatting about a, a sports game yeah. this weekend or something. We're chatting and then that evolves into, hey, why don't we make a small bet around it? Yeah. Or it could be, you know, someone has a birthday and we want to buy someone a gift, right? Um, and, and right now, in, in Telegram and Taunt, that golden moment happens in Telegram. And then you can execute that without leaving the app, right? You can open up a mini app and you mm -hmm. can do some sort of prediction or you can go to the wallet and you can remit money for a birthday gift or something like that. You know, ultimately, that prevents a fragmented experience because otherwise folks would need to, you know, have their call to action in a group, then they need to go to a web app, log in, use MetaMask, all this other stuff. The bounce rate on that is extremely high, right? So maybe out of 100 people who start that action, maybe 50 finish it. Whereas on Telegram, that call to action converts to, you know, maybe 80 or 90 people who finish that action. That's meaningful increase in, in revenue for people who build businesses around that For concept. sure. I mean, I, I'll give you an example of that. My main form of communication, my audience is my Telegram group and not email. Hmm. Because my open rate is 80%, not 20%. And then the click-through rate is everybody listens to it because it's a voice memo. You don't have to read. So I'll just be like, I'll send a two-minute morning voice memo to 130,000 people. Yeah. And within two minutes, four or 5,000 people listen to it. Yeah. I couldn't do that via email. <laughs> you know why? Well, I have to go get permission from the email servers, and now I need to get all the rules and regulations and make sure that this word, I can't say this word because that word will get keyword banned, and then Gmail is going to flag my, my <laughs> domain. So you have your ability to even communicate. People say, oh, you need people's email address because that's the strongest form if everything goes down. Yeah. Email, but nobody opens it, dude. Yeah. You know, it's not the same. Flagged up. And I bet now, even with your voice, my people forward that on to other groups. 100%. No, well, what I do is I turn off the forwarding. Oh. It's, we're talking about gamification. Yeah. So I turn off the forwarding, and all my messages delete after 24 hours. Yeah. Oh, I see. So you, I, it's a true Telegram message, right? Like, you get to receive it once, and then it's gone. That's it. So that's the feature that I utilize. So you have high retention rate. People actually stick around. So there's there's ability to sca add scarcity, gamify the experience with the users. And to me, Telegram incorporates personability, mm -hmm. right? A personal touch. And it, it's so dynamic that it can appeal to a mass range of audiences. But talking about audiences, where do you see Telegram growing? Where do you see Ton taking off? Yeah. What are the markets that you see exploding? So. I, I get asked this question a lot, and it's like a very natural answer. I, I actually think Asia, um, folks in Asia understand the value proposition of Telegram and Ton together than almost any other region. Of course, there's CIS, which is like the stronghold uh, region of Telegram and Ton, but they understand it because they've been using super apps for the last 15 years. Yep. And they've been using WeChat, and I think you can look at the roadmap of WeChat, and you can approximate that that may be how Ton and, and Telegram together integrate, right? Starts at very strong messaging, and then there's all these like interesting financial products that come out of it. You know, I think at some point, WeBank, uh, basically the financial arm of WeChat was something like the fifth largest bank um, in, in all of mainland China. So that's crazy. So I, I think you're gonna see the most people coming from, from Asia. Um, and you know, I was just in, in Indonesia. Uh, I think it's one of the highest Telegram penetration rates you know, something, you know, like 60% plus wow. people who are like internet enabled have like downloaded Telegram. It's, it's and then certain. games as well. Big gamers out there as well. So you're kind of mixing yep. the, the two in there. And I think we might see penetration, but well, I'm seeing a lot just a penetration in areas that I wouldn't have expected. There's a lot in Africa and they're quite experienced as well. You know, they're, they're doing a lot of meetups off their own back as well, which is good to see. Starting to see a little bit more in Latin as well. Uh, their currencies have been devalued like to hell. Uh, and they're, they're, I think they're just seeing an easy, easy way to sort of keep their value stored in there. So um, we're starting to see a lot of those users pop up, crop up. And again, like, you know, now near enough covered the whole planet, but like, uh, I think Europe as well, we're, we're gonna see again, maybe markets like Germany, France, hopefully the UK as well, start utilizing a lot more of the power features on there as well. So um, mm. yeah, pretty exciting. Wrapping up, I want to talk about the super app concept. Mm -hmm. A lot of people in the West, they don't understand super apps because we don't have one yet. 
X is attempting to be the centralized super app. Elon's obviously talked about it. They're already trying to get all their licenses, X, Y, and Z. But it feels like Telegram and Ton, the marriage and incorporation there, that the attempt and the goal is to become a decentralized super app. Thoughts? Yeah, I would completely agree. It's it's decentralized super app, and I think um, you're you're seeing the customer acquisition loop right now revolve around gaming. Hmm. Um, I, I think if you look at WeChat, something like 30 to 40 percent of people who use WeChat Messenger also use mini apps or gaming mini apps in some way. You know, VK something like 12 uh, percent. I think the Meta Messenger it's something like 10 percent. Historically, this has been low on Telegram and Ton. It's been like sub 4 percent because we haven't had uh, the monet uh, monetization levers that we have now with Telegram stars and uh, ad channel revenue share and, and Telegram ads and some of these things. But not only are we building a decentralized super app, but now you're starting to see what the customer acquisition en engine is going to be. Yeah. Um, and this has proven to have product market fit in many apps and sure. gaming many apps. I don't know if you share the same view. I feel the internet is like so much worse than what it was five years ago. I can't, I can't go on a website now without being bombarded with about five or six click, click, click. You know, I just want to see that, you know, the news bit. And it's like, no, click here for notifications, click here for cookies. Is this, do you want to sign up for our newsletter? And he just gets like, I just, it's very frustrating. It's a very, it's You're a being very, consumed. Yeah, and You're I'm like, just, and I, I, I'm getting to the point now where I'm spending more and more, not just because I work, I'm working within the ecosystem, I'm just, I'm spending a lot more of my life because you're getting people sending articles within Telegram. and I. I I think we're going to get to the point, and I don't know if it's the same with you. You spend so much more now time within Telegram than anything else. You know, I think the majority of the time I've got my phone on, there's something in Telegram that I'm looking at, or something related that I've been pushed from Telegram to, and uh, super apps, surely. I, I, I can't see a reason why it can't be, and I don't think maybe it's strided initially to do that, but it's now starting to get there. And what I've seen coming up, projects that have come to me, you know, video and content, you know, like, I think you're gonna get to the point you just stay in there. Yeah. In, in Stanfire's DeFi super app? I hope so. <laughs> I, I definitely think so. We've I got mean, you as our user. Yeah, well, I mean, which the, is, the, uh, the, the possibilities are infinite. I mean, I already do live streams in there, right? So I, I'm like, the, the live stream features, obviously, they're, they're improving, but tips on live streams are gonna come out. They're, all these things are being cooked up, I know for a fact. So I'm super pumped as a creator. I think it's a, a great place to decentralize your community and to have it as a main source of communication. You can't rely on Instagram stories. No. Like, you can't rely on, on a tweet. You have to have a central place of communication that is decentralized and that you own. Yeah. And to me, that's been Telegram. And now that you can add financial incentives to that, you can hide features that people paywall, they get access to. It's really, really cool. The beauty about the Ton ecosystem, in my opinion, is also the fact that hopefully in the future there's plans for hardware. Nobody's told me yet, <laughs> you know? <laughs> A couple folks trying. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. The, I've heard that those, you know, that's the next frontier. But what's the future, in your opinion, for just the market in general? Where do you see the next 12, 18 months? Are we on a downtrend, uptrend, bullish, bearish? What's your opinion? I think it's incredibly bullish right now. Um, and I actually think American politics fit into that a little bit. Mm. Um, and now you've seen basically both parties, um, you know, kind of aggressively courting the, the crypto user base um, and saying that, you know, poli policy initiatives will, will be friendly. Uh, I think we're at the peak of rates right now. And I think uh, many, you know, uh, the central banks in, in countries have said this is about the highest it's going to go. So now you're pricing in race rate cuts in the next you know six to eighteen months. Um, so you have some amount of regulatory clarity. You have you know some amount of uh, you know cheaper money coming in the ecosystem. And then across that you have platforms that have proven their worth, like Telegram and Ton yeah. together, finding serious product market fit. And I think these three things together, it's going to be a good six to eighteen months. Yes, yep. I agree. I, I, I just just quickly with the politics, I feel. If you go anti-crypto, you're losing votes. 100%. But you're not gaining votes. You know, I don't think anyone, oh, yeah, they're very anti-crypto. I'm going to vote for them. Whereas you're pro-crypto. Nobody actually it. hates crypto. You no. either dislike it or you love it so bad that yeah. you're willing to die for it. Like, it, there isn't, oh, I'm okay with crypto. If you mess with people's bags, you're over. Yeah. And they're realizing this. But you, you, you might think, look, it's getting looks close. If there's a like a one percent or point one percent, like why why risk it? Yeah. You know, like that. So uh, I'm not going to talk about politics. You know, like, but I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of just like okay, we're now a lot more open to the discussions. You know, and I think beforehand, 
you're near enough needed to do. We've seen you need to break down a lot of walls to get the crypto going forward. I think it's going to be a lot more supported now. Um, huge plans, obviously, from Stormfy as a gateway. So we're, we're obviously with the cross chain, we're looking to bring in um, all those crypto users within Ton. And again, Ton Gateway, I don't know if you're familiar with the, the gateway. Hopefully you'll be with us in November. But I think the whole idea of Ton is the gateway to crypto. It's not one blockchain. It's going to bring in all the other blockchains within there. And it's like the first point that you're going to come. So hopefully Stomfy is going to be the gateway of the gateway that's out there. And look, it's really exciting that the opportunity and the potential that we we are seeing. And look, I'm, I think I'm really lucky because I used to see a lot of hearsay. Oh, look, this could be the future. Now I'm seeing stuff that's built. So I'm seeing, you know, games with that's in built our SDK. They're making money from it through the referrals, but now it's already built in the games. And this is stuff like years ago, I was saying like, this could be the future. Yeah. It's happening now. And you know, you could gamify your Telegram channel. Imagine like all the opportunities that you haven't even thought about. You know, let's say um, a chance to, to meet you in London. You know, you've got 100 um, NFT tickets, first 100 people, first 100 people to complete a task, press a button, complete in the channel, they show up with their NFT tickets to see. Yeah, it's, it's huge. Unlimited event. opportunities. I've started seeing communities now launch their uh, e-commerce mm -hmm. stores yeah. for limited drops on Telegram. Yeah. You join the community. If you get access to the limited drop, you click the button, you do checkout on Telegram, and you get the drop. So now the people are kind of building bots to start sniping these drops. And yeah. So now you're seeing sneaker culture get on Telegram. It's quite good. But gentlemen, uh, thank you so much for thank joining you. me. It's been a bullish conversation. <laughs> Love it. Look forward to uh, seeing you guys somewhere in the metaverse. And hopefully we can do a part two. Thank you so much. Perfect. Cheers for having us, Luke. Cheers. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Awesome. Good session. Hope Great. that was all right. Lovely, lovely. Cheers. Hope we gave you some good sound bites. Let's, do, uh, let's do some thumbnails. If that's all right. Do you have to do the uh, hands on our face? <laughs> uh, no, 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 you're good. We'll